Right now, it is my happy privilege to turn the service over to our pastor, Sister Rose. Please welcome her as she comes. There's always somebody talking about me. Oh, really, I don't mind. They try to block and stop my progress most of the time. Oh, you know, the mean things you say don't make me feel bad. Can't miss a friend. I never had, I got Jesus. So many times that I didn't have a dime. Didn't tell nobody but the Lord. Heard my plea, he came to see about me. He's my all in all. Oh, you can down. He fixed me up. Sticks by me when my going. Enough. Oh, yeah. oh, he brought me, he taught me, God saved me, he saved me, he's my shepherd, he's my God. talking about me that I don't mind they try to block and stop my progress most of the time but the mean things you say they don't really make me feel bad because I can't miss a friend I never had I praise him this morning because he's so good he loves me more than anybody in the whole world I wouldn't trade him for nothing because he is what's happening today Yes, he is. I'm preaching this morning from St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Father, we're grateful today for your blessings, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the privilege of serving you and living for you. I pray, God, that your divine and perfect will would be done. I pray, God, for those who are doing the things that are so wrong that you stretch forth your hand in a mighty way. You're the only one who can. I pray now, God, that you would anoint your servant, that I would give what you've given to me, and we'll give you glory and we'll give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The 13th verse says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want to preach to you a little while this morning. You know what? We live in a world where people like to follow whatever the majority of the crowd is doing. But it tells us the majority of people in this world are not doing it right. And so he says, this way is a wide way, and many there be that go therein. It's the way of destruction. But oftentimes, we live in a, in a, in a time when people uh, follow every fad that comes along. Everything that comes along, that's what we want to be a part of, and it's a tragedy. So he says that wide is the gate, and broad is the way, and many there be which go therein. So when I look at this, I'm thinking, look around you, look on the job, look everywhere you go, and you will find people trying to follow what the majority is doing. But the majority is going to hell, not to heaven. And so when you see everybody partaking of it, everybody's in 
headed these people on the wrong road. Because he said the narrow is the way that leads to life everlasting. So when I look at that, I'm thinking to myself, come on. You know, why do you want to do what everybody else do? Because I want to be, I want to be in, but in could cost you your life. You could be with them if you want to. But you better find out, and without a doubt, that people are on the wrong path, going down the wrong way. And you know what? And they're not thinking about it, except that's what everybody else does. How many times have I said to our members, if you go on a job and, and, you, and everybody else is doing something and you've been told the rules are a certain thing, oh, okay. And you say, well, everybody else broke it. It doesn't give you the right to do it. So what they do a lot of times, they end up getting fired or losing the job due to the fact that they really, really follow what somebody else does. Say, well, she did it. Maybe she's been there longer than you. Maybe she knows the boss. Maybe she's in with the boss. But you better understand if you do it, it's going to cost you something. So it's not about all these things, but more or less following what is right. When you go on a job, they tell you what the rules are. Follow those rules. If you see 10 people breaking it, don't you break it. Make up in your mind, look, I'm not going down this road. I know what they told me. That's what I'm going to do. Now, a crowd of people, watch where the crowd is going. You see a big crowd of people. They say, what's going on? They're all going someplace except not the right place. So we got to take a moment and look at our lives and say, who am I following? That's what my friend does. So after I found out she did it, I just did it too. What kind of friend do you have? And is that friend a good friend? Is that friend a right friend? Ask yourself that. So I look at the picture and I say, I don't want to go with you because you're on the wrong road. I don't want to follow anybody that don't know where they're going. If, some, if we fall in a group going down the highway, I don't want to be behind somebody who don't know where they're going. That's not going to happen because nothing is worse than getting lost. Nothing is worse. And when you follow people down the wrong highway, you are going to find yourself lost. Nobody should have an unsaved friend. Nobody. The world says, I mean, I mean the word of God says, if I'm a friend of the world, I'm an enemy of God. How can two walk together except they agree? They got to walk together. We got to be in, 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 uh, in, uh, in harmony about something. So you got to look at your life and say, wait a minute. What am I doing with a worldly friend who goes to the club, who drinks, who do all these things? Why am I hooked up with you? How can two walk together except they agree? I thought, I thought yesterday when I was watching the news for a little while and and uh, Donald Trump picked his, his, his running mate, have mercy. And um, he, he picked the running mate. And this man is in total disagreement with almost everything. And I'm thinking to myself, how are you going to be vice president? Because you got to agree with this man. You ain't going to be vice president and come out to the media and talk and tell them all these things I don't like about him. You're going to chill that. You're going to be quiet about that. And I'm looking at that, these politicians are some of the biggest liars on the planet. And the more I look at them, think, my God, how do y'all lie so straight? This morning I had the TV on for a little while, and I just started laughing. I thought, boy, y'all some of the biggest liars around here. Never seen nothing like it. And, and, and here is uh, Donald Trump saying yesterday, uh, Ted Cruz is a great, great man, good man. I said, you just a few weeks ago called him Lion Ted. How is that? A Lion Ted. Oh, yes, he's a good man. I'm, I'm thinking, how can anybody believe any of you? How can I believe you're going to do something good for me or the country with these lies swinging all over the place? I'm thinking, and they said, well, it's just politics. No, it's just lies. So who can I trust? Because all, all these people, they kept, there was Chris Christie came out there and dogged Donald Trump to the grave. They come out, now you, you're talking good for him? What is this? This world is in a bad shape. And you better be careful who you follow. You better be careful who you vote for. It is a tragedy. I'm thinking, God, where can I find some truth? The scripture said truth done fell in the street. It's falling in the 
ministry. What is wrong with this world? It makes you just stop and think, God, I need to be sure I'm focused right, on the right path, doing the right thing. That's important because you can get sidetracked following people. Yesterday, I think there was an accident when we were going home from church, and my daughter uh, was driving me in the car, and, 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 uh, and, the, and the police, I mean, the, um, the fire truck was over there, and, and she's looking, going over in the other lane. I said, Nisi, no, no, I'm in the lane. I said, no, you're going in the other lane. Oh, I see, this is what people, everybody wants to see what's going on. Where's the crowd? You see a crowd, people going to stop. So I'm like, what's going on? Just nosy. You know, it ain't even important. Right. You know, got to stop along the road. Sometimes you're in a hurry to get home, and it's been an accident on the, on the other side of the road, and people are driving slow looking. And I'm thinking, let's go. Let's go. But the more I look at the world and how it functions, I never cease to be amazed. At the things that's going on in this world, in the church world, it is a tragedy. I never thought I'd live long enough to see what I'm seeing today. These, they call themselves Christians. Everybody's a Christian in this hour. You know, it's almost if you're a Christian, you're part of the fad. Because a real Christianity comes from this book. And if you don't live by it, you're not a Christian. I am alarmed. I am alarmed and surprised when I look at this. The church has rejected the way of God for the most part. And they reject his statutes and his covenants. We, we got all new rules. They're redoing things. They're writing amendments to the word of God. Preaching from the pulpit telling you it's all right to do this and all right to do that. And you just get with the crowd. Well, everybody in our church is doing it. Is everybody in your church right? Because if they're not, you shouldn't follow. If, if the pastor's not right, are you following them? Stop for a minute. Take a look at what, what's going on around you and make a decision. I got to make the right decision. Because if you make the wrong one, you got to live with that. It's not easy to do. And so here people sit every day. You know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm not sure if this is right or not. But, you know, everybody else is doing it. Don't follow them. Don't follow them. So as I look at this, I'm thinking, he, their fathers, their foreparents, everybody has set up new rules. And, and the majority of the people say, I like this better. I want to be able to party and go to the club and drink booze and, and, and do drugs and all this stuff. And we can do it in our church. You're in the wrong church. You're in the wrong church. You better find a place where the Spirit of God is, where you know without a doubt that he's there. And you better find a place that is good, that's going to give you good rather than bad. Think about it. So I don't want to be with the biggest church in town just because it's the biggest church. But what are they teaching? What is the preacher preaching? Let us take a look at that. Before I just, it's amazing how many people will go to a church because it's a mega church. It's a big church. I, I, I like big churches. I'm, I've never been interested in mega. Never been interested. These people I got here keep me busy. I mean, they keep me busy. So I can't imagine mega. Mega headaches. Mega, mega, mega tiredness. And always somebody into something. It takes everything I got in this church with our members to be sure you stay on the right track. That's important. Very important. So, I got to change things. I remember when my kids were in school. We were in Germany for a while. And they had some of the black boys was wearing these black scarves on their head, I think they call them do-rags. That's what they look like, a do-rag. <laughs> and, and I happened to be coming in the car with somebody and passed by the tennis court, and my son was out there uh, playing tennis, and I said, because I didn't see this at the house, so he must have put it on after he left. And so I said, Junior, 
come here. He comes, I said, what's on your head? Everybody wear them. I said, what's on your head? I didn't ask you about how many people doing it. What's on your head, stupid? <laughs> Mama, this is a do-rag. I said, you get that do-rag off your head before I beat the doo-doo out of you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Looking like a fool. Just because they said everybody else is doing it. I said, I don't care who's doing it. And let's, let's look normal. Let's look like we need to look. You know what? I don't need my hair in an afro to say I'm black. Look at me. You already know I, see, I think I'm black up here. I don't need some kind of crazy hairdo. I'm looking everywhere. We got more nappy-headed Negroes running around here than I ever seen in my life. And I'm thinking to myself, how do we know who you are? There's no doubt you are black. Do you have to wear a, a piece of steel wool on top of your head to suggest that? Everywhere I looked at some nappy-headed person, I'm thinking, what is all these nappy-headed people doing? Because this is my identity. Honey, you, you can't lose black. If a black and a white person marry, black is so dominant, you look at the kids and say, that's a mixed kid. You know what? Because black is standing out. Black is dominant. You don't have to do anything special to present black. I'm black. And that's okay. But I don't have to put my hair in a bunch of nappy rolls all over my head, stand up looking like you stuck your finger in a light socket and didn't, couldn't get it out fast enough. Get a grip. Get a grip. I think, wow. And all of a sudden it was here. And I just thought, look at what's, what's, what's with this? And while you look on TV, eh, here's another pile of hair. What's, what's wrong? What happened? We already had our Afro day. You know the Afro age. We had that already. We had uh, the piercings and all this. We've been there. But you don't need something crazy to identify who you are. Or are you saying to the world, hey, hey, I want you to know who I am. Hey. God help us today. Let us learn to appreciate who we are. And we don't have to run around with different fans to prove that. Yes. Because it's okay to be different. It's okay. You know, sometimes black people have a problem with people that are blacks that are different. <laughs> if uh, I was raised in St. Louis in the ghetto, deep ghetto. I traveled around the, the country and around the world some with my husband. And so you find yourself changing the way you think, the way you uh, feel about things. Because you, you, get, you get to know other people and their cultures and what have you. So when you go home, you're not quite the girl that was there. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, what do you mean what's wrong with me? <laughs> you don't even seem like our sister. So what, not, what do I need to do to be your sister? What do I need to be? This is me. I happen to grow up a little bit. I happen to go places and learn some things about other cultures. But don't tell me that I'm not your sister because I developed, because I became mature, because I kind of view life different now. Come on. I don't want to run around with everybody else that's crazy. You know, you run with crazy. They tag you crazy. My grandmother still put this in my brain as long as I can remember. You're known by the company you keep. I got so tired of hearing that. Rose, be careful who you run with. You're known by the company you keep. She was absolutely right. See? But I'm saying today, where do you want to go? You want to go to heaven? Get on the road where there's a traveler every now and then. But if you're on the road where it's so crowded you can't hardly get through, you're on the wrong road. People are going to hell, I mean, by the millions. And you got to say, I don't want to go to hell. Well, find out which road goes to heaven. There's two roads. One is the heavenly, uh, the wide, I mean, the narrow path, and the other one is the broad path. Don't want to go there. You better get off of there. You know what I don't understand? 
all of us are so different. We all have different personalities. What might look good on you may not look good on me. I'm not just going to get it because you got one. And you come out looking like Daffy Duck. Come on here. You got to stop for me and say, honey, that's so pretty on you. But I could never wear that. It's okay. I don't care if it is the style. If it is the fed. Just because everybody else is wearing and looking like doofy ooky. Why are you going to join them? Not doing it. Not doing it. What, what works for me does not necessarily work for you. What I can wear, you may not can wear. How I can fix my hair may, be, may not be the way you can wear yours. So we're different. So why do we feel like we have to become everybody else to be recognized? No, I don't think so. I told my son one time we were in Oklahoma, and I had bought him some penny loafer shoes. <coughs> and he said, Mommy, nobody wearing these kind of shoes to school. I said, I, I didn't buy them because everybody was wearing them. Got him some slacks. Everybody wearing jeans. I never understood to me why you would buy a pair of jeans with holes in it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I buy them with holes. I buy them rusty and washed out. I think it, he comes to me, Mama, I'm not going to look like everybody else. I said, you don't want to. You want to look like Charles Jr. You don't want to look like everybody else. He was upset. He'd go to school looking like a white boy. <laughs> I didn't try to make you no white boy. I just made you dress accordingly. Quit looking stupid. Your britches hanging off your rear end. If that ain't a sick thing, I mean, hanging down like that, I'm pooped in their britches, and they walking like that. I'm thinking, pull your pants up. Why is that a, why is that a big thing for your britches to hang off of your butt? Something's wrong with that. But everybody else is doing, here they come. And most of them stupid, ignorant, ain't got no education. And here they come with their britches doing this. And I'm thinking, wow. Pull your britches up, baby. Walking on the bottom of the leg. Come on. We don't have to be that. We choose what we want to be. We choose what God has ordained us to be. Not like the world and all this crazy stuff they're doing. You know, some people, I don't care what the world do, they would get on board with it. You, they don't look right on you. You need, you need, you, you need something different. So I can't, I can't really look at that and, and say, you know, well, that's the way I want to look. We all got different bodies, different shapes. Some people got fat bellies, some of them don't. Some people got huge derrieres. Some people don't. Some people got little tiny legs. Some people don't. Now, if you got some things that's not necessarily flattering to you, that doesn't uh, give you something add to you, don't put it on. Nobody has to tell me I know what I can wear and what I can't wear. I can't go to the store and just say, oh, ain't that pretty? Is it pretty on you? It's pretty on the hanger. Don't you dare put it on. You destroy the whole look. <laughs> the whole look. Think about it. I was standing up in Lily Rubin that used to be here years ago, very exclusive dress shop. And this lady coming there, she had the worst figure you ever seen in your life. And she comes in and go in the, in the dressing room and put on this dress and come back out. And she said, and look. Horrible. And as she asked the salesperson, how does this look? She said, you look gorgeous. <laughs> I thought, I don't think so. And then she looked over at me. I thought, baby, don't come over here because <laughs> if you do, if you come over here, I'm getting ready to tell you, if I were you, I wouldn't buy that dress. You look horrible in that dress. You showing every hump and bump you got. You don't want to do that. You want to camouflage the bad part. We all could put on something tight and straight. But honey, wait a minute. How many humps and bumps and dimples do you have over the, over the rear end, down the fat thighs? And you don't put on a fitted dress. You wear something to camouflage it. Men the same way. Men, men are different. Who is that? <laughs> yes. Men are different too. Men can't all wear the same thing. Because it's a fad. Everybody else is doing it. 
You ain't all got great bodies. I mean, you might want one. But you don't all have it. So we got to look at the fact this is, this is something I must, re- I must consider. Not just follow the crowd. What else can I do? Uh, or what can I put on that, that will somehow flatter me? My daughter went to the store one time and put on some heels, and my son-in-law said, those don't flatter you at all. She said, I don't care what you think. Yeah, I care, I care. Some things are not flattering. And then they walk out and say, how do I look? Never ask me that. I promise you, I will tell you the truth. I promise you, when you leave me, you will know that it's not good. This is something we've gotten so embroiled into, even in the church world as a whole. I mean, boy, they've got all kind of stuff going on in the church now. I mean, they got these clubs. They got, they got a, a, a Starbucks out in the, uh, out in the, uh, in the foyer, and they got all this stuff. It's just. I mean, you can go there and go shopping on Sunday. I mean, you want some Starbucks that's down the hallway? You may even see a Burger King or a McDonald's. This is not church. There's plenty of places for McDonald's. What is it doing in the church? Come on. I was raised in the church of God in Christ, a Pentecostal church all my life. Them folks don't do nothing but cook, cook, cook. Then they got mad with me because I said, I don't want to be on anybody's team. Well, Sister Banks, why wouldn't you want to be on the team? I said, I'm really not interested. You got church going on. You smelling fried fish, chicken, uh, cornbread. All this stuff is going on. Why church is going on? And you know what you see? People in the black church doing this. Walking out, headed to the kitchen. Church is going on. They go to the kitchen. I looked up one time. I thought, where's all the people? The church was just emptying out. The more that chicken aroma came up in there and all that, they were just putting their finger up and tipping out. And so I had to go to the restroom back there, which wasn't far from the kitchen. I go back there. The whole hallway is lined up with people with plants and eating chicken and fish. I thought, well, who's having church? Where's the honor? Either we're going to have church or we're going to have some buffet. And then got mad with me because I said, I would rather not. Well, Sister Banks, is there a reason? I said, I'd just rather not. I'm trying to figure this garbage out. I never seen this before when I was a little girl. What is this? The church has gotten a hundred times worse since then. All the stuff that's going on in it and, and, and the singles club and, and, and all this stuff. And they go in there. And you know what singles is about? You go there and look over John, see if he your type. And check out Susie. Lust. Lust. All over the place. In here, that is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm amazed. So, Sister Rose, y'all have a singles group? No, ma'am, we don't. Singles come and sit on the pew, hear the word, you hear it too. And when you get through with it, get saved and get on out. I've had people mad with me, me and come up in this church looking at women. I said, this is not an escort place. Come, you come to church to get an escort? I don't, be, I don't believe you. A man got mad with me one time when I called him on the carpet. I said, brother, you won't be able to walk around this church and hit on, hit on sisters. He says, so what do you do up in here when you see somebody you're attracted to? I said, you see somebody you lusting after? You can do that out in the world. Why are you doing it in the church? That's why we got such a mess in the church. Preachers having babies by members and deacons ain't no good. The choir members suck. Everything is messed up. Everybody's doing all this stuff and calling it church. It's not church. And I don't care how many churches in the country is doing it. Colorado Springs Fellowship ain't going to do it. They have become vain. And God said, I don't want you doing what the heathen are doing. I don't want you following Hollywood style. I don't want you becoming a part of Hollywood. Come on, church and, and Hollywood, they don't mix. 
everything under the sun goes on in Hollywood. What are your church doing mingling with them? You watch some of these award shows on TV, and my God, you got preachers sitting up in there lusting. You got whores walking around, boobs hanging out, cheeks hanging out, thigh hanging out. Everything is a hang. You say, how you pull it in? What are you doing? And they sitting there with the preachers, lusting after this stuff. It's not supposed to be and I don't care if they fill up auditorium everywhere and put uh, put all these women there you know what the, uh, one of the award shows I can't remember what one it is now they had to lift it. the women dressed so naked they had to make a rule you could not come to the award show with skimpy clothes on with too much showing in the world they do it in the church and I look at them sometimes and think, what, who did you come to see, baby? Women coming in the church, walking around the offering table. Rear end is a few kids playing under the blanket. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And I'm thinking, and you got on that tight dress, and everything is it's just, ooh. And you got men in the audience saying, let me see that. Man. I thought, why would you want something that big and fluffy? Why would you want it? And it's just shaking all over the place. Here it comes around. I'm thinking, come on, this is church. We at Colorado Spring Fellowship is not going to be a part of that. No. I don't see nothing wrong with it because you hold my you like to look at it. No, I don't think they be telling women how to dress and stuff like that. I mean, let the women come on in. They get mad with us sometimes. That's why we have a, a thing on the door out there saying, we have a dress code. Ask us about it. Ask us about it. Before you come in here naked. I'm thinking, did you bother to cover up at all? It's, it's unbelievable. I'm looking at this stuff thinking, what is going on? And then get mad with us. You say, we had, we had a thrift store not long ago across the thing there. We closed it. And it had a lot of nice clothes in there. And so when women come to church, if, they, if they're not clad right, say, you want to go over here with us? You can, you can have a free outfit. It'll cover up your rear end and your boobs. How about that? And some people was just happy about it. It's like, oh, if I can get a free dress, give it to me. Then you have someone say, honey, I like the way I look. This morning I put this on, I like it. They say, you like it? You ain't going to wear it in here? Right. Baby, I don't have to be here. <laughs> no, you don't. And we don't miss you. <laughs> All this hand language. And I'm thinking, this is our church. You can go to any church you want to, but in this church. We have rules. We have to do that. It's the house of God. Some man come in church. That's what that Bishop Long did, a filthy homemonger. And there he was in the pulpit with tight stretched shirts on and showing his biceps and, 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 and coming down. I thought, and, and, and after he had them boys and, he, and all the, half of the members left, and he said, uh, the one lady said, I felt funny when he came out in that tight body shirt and the, and the muscles showing it. He said, I thought, is that the way a preacher's supposed to look? We need to hold preachers accountable. If you say you're my minister, if you say you're a preacher, why do you look like a pimp? Why is that? Shouldn't do it. But everybody else is doing it. You know what? It was a time in my day that preachers came to the pulpit. No matter how hot they got, they would not release their jacket. They wouldn't release their jacket. Now they're coming in blue jeans, a t uh, some kind of T-shirt. I'm thinking, come on, it's church. What happened? Because everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is doing it, so why not us? Let me tell you something. Following the multitude to do wrong will cost you your life. Following every fad and style that come on will degrade you as a person. It takes away your real identity of who you are and who you could be. 
think about it. I don't really, you said, I don't really care what people think of me. That's why you don't have a job. You better think. When I go there, I bet not go in there with my britches doing this. Ain't nobody going to hire you. Whether you know it or not, this is a white society. And they have rules. And the bottom line is, if you want a job, you better conform. If you don't conform, they don't have to hire you. Hey, man, what's up? You walk in a job being interviewed, tell me, hey, what's up, man? Man said, what? What are you talking about? I'm telling you what, it, what the truth is. And I'm not changing myself for nobody. And you'll be right where you are years from now. We got to adjust, adapt. Change things, change us. Say, God, I need you to help me to be the person that I need to be. I want to be what you want me to be. We don't like to talk about this stuff. But we want to follow the crowd because everybody else is doing it. Why do I have to change? You figure it out. You figure it out. People will follow the crowd on any fashion. You know the fashion of this day? We change it and, and go there. We had some ladies on TV the other day had fingernails. I probably can't stretch it far enough. Fingernails that long turned around, curled up. I'm thinking, how do you do anything with that? You learn, she learned how to do it. I thought, well, how do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> this is all hanging down, hanging down, hanging down. Come on here. I thought that ain't going to work. These things are curled up like that. I'm thinking, They'll go in the toilet when you sit on it. What is it? And then there'll be somebody else say, you know what, girl, this is the thing. Or else uh, lime green fingernails or, or navy blue with an animal on top of it. I'm thinking, I believe you ought to take care of your hands, do, do a nice one. What, you, what are you wearing tigers for? All these things are going on there and a green nail and a pink one and a blue and yellow. You're talking about confused? It's like, oh, what is this? And they'll tell you this is about my identity. This is me, baby. Take a look. This is me. This is how I like that. Looking like a fool. We have left God, left true holiness, left righteousness to go out here and become some of the fads of this world. Shouldn't do it. The Bible said don't follow a multitude to do evil. Right. If somebody's going, doing something wrong, they tell you come go, say I'm not going. My uncle, he was raised in holiness church just like I was, my mother's brother. And he wasn't saved at the time. But once you've got that teaching in you, it definitely tells you what you can do and what you can't. And so my uncle was hanging out with these guys, and they said, man, we're going to go over here and hit this store. Come on, Percy. He said, man, I can't do that. Man, you ought to go and join the church. He said, I think I will. I'm not going over there and rob no store. Yeah, I think I will. Don't follow people to do wrong, to do evil things. Following people can lead you down a path you shouldn't go. End up in jail following somebody. End up in a bad accident following some drunk. Think. Just because everybody else is doing, I think it's great when you stand out as different. I'm different. I'm not like everybody else. Neither do I want to be. See, the crowd is looking for this. And every time, you know what, who leads, who leads in the fashion of the world? Hollywood. Things come out and in style, and I get those magazines, in style and, and Vogue magazine. They're setting the trend for, for, for now. This is for this year. So this is what all is going to be going strong. This is what everybody's wearing this. Everybody likes this. Do you? That's why you can't become a Christian. 
because I don't want nobody laughing at me. He said, man, you went down to church and got holy? <laughs> Solomon said every fool will be meddling you if you make that decision. But, hey, at the end of the day, you're going to be glad you made it because they're going to hell and you're going to heaven. <laughs> Think about it. So people run around and say, man, old John, you know where he at? He at church. <laughs> yeah, he, he goes Sunday morning and Sunday night. Man, he really lost it. No, he really found it. Yes. I got a song that I've been listening to, and it says, I, I, what it is, it says, I gave up, I gave it, I gave it all up so that I could find everything. I, whatever I was, I was willing to sacrifice that because what I found now is, is better. I'm richer than I ever been. I'm happier than I ever been. I'm excited about life. Why? But I had to give up something to have it. It's an exchange. But it's a good exchange. Right. And it makes your life different. Not for the, just for the moment, forever. They don't get worse than I was. They named me Gangster Girl in St. Louis because I was such a no good, mean, honorary person. Here come Gangster Girl. I didn't too much want to be called Gangster Girl, but I, fit it, I, I sure fit the name. Carrying a weapon? Think, I'm tired of beating up men. I beat up all my sister's boyfriends. Don't mess with my sister. Here come Rose. Don't mess with my sister. I'm pregnant, fighting a man, wallowing in the floor. Mama said, Rose, that baby going to come out fighting. Said, these people think they're who they think they are. Mean? Nasty. Rude. Had no real meaning in my life. Nobody can't tell me that when you turn it over to Jesus, he changes you. He makes you a new person. You leave that old stuff behind because I'm telling you, whatever you got now, it ain't nothing. It ain't worth nothing. It has no real value. But he picked me up from the muck and the mire of sin and said, come here, Rose. I want to change your life. You've been running around here with this one and that one. Come here. I want to change your life. He changed me into the person that I am today. He took away all this crazy stuff. All the other all stuff that was mean that made me evil and make me want to kill and destroy. He took it away and put in love and excitement in my life for him. Made me a preacher when I never in a million years thought I would be a preacher. First of all, I couldn't talk. I stammered so bad, by the time you got to hear me put out a couple of words, you said, hey, look, I'll catch you later. <laughs> All that time, trying to go, oh, be a preacher? Nobody would sit on the pew. They said, you know, I had enough of it. But God said, no, no, no. I'm going to change all that for Rose. Rose, you're going to be able to talk. That didn't even seem possible to me. I had been stammering all my life, me and my cousin Pauline. Both of us was bad, boy. You couldn't see what one was worse than the other one. He said, I fixed that. He fixed it. You would never know I was a stammerer unless I told you. Couldn't talk, but he said, I'm going to make you a preacher. I want to change your life, Rose. I want to bring you over here. Come to the ghetto of St. Louis, Missouri, in the Pruitt and I Go Projects, where nothing but all kind of drug dealers and Bad stuff went on there, murders and everything else. I'm going to pick you up out of that and bring you over here, and I'm going to change you. And I want you to declare it to people and let them know, don't follow the crowd. You can get out. I don't care how impossible it seems. You can get out. God can change your life, make you a new person. But if you're still going to follow the wrong crowd, you're never going to get out. Quit running with the drunk so you can stop drinking. Quit running with the drug dealer or the, or the people that's on drugs. As long as you're with them, you're going to do it. Separate yourself. So I'm getting out of here. Man, you are, you are really no good. You want them little nerds running around. Say, well, I'm a smart nerd. I'm a smart nerd. Thank you. Yes. So you call me a nerd if you will. But I got a paycheck. Yeah. 
Where's your check? You broke, rotten bomb. You trying to put me down? Hey. But see, I didn't care what people thought before I got saved. And after I got saved, I really didn't care. I thought, hey, I got, yeah, I'm called to do this. To do this job. To speak the truth. To love people. Because I didn't love nobody. If you had two legs for walking, I hated you. I didn't, I didn't have love nobody. He took all that out of me. So I'm going to change your roles and send you on a journey. That was 50 years ago. I curse worse than, I don't know if a person on the planet could beat my foul, filthy mouth. Curse every breath I breathe, laughing, cursing, crying, cursing. Get up in the morning, cursing, lay down at night, cursing. Just filthy. Took it all the way. I ain't had no oops moment. Oh, excuse my French. That ain't French. Are you kidding me? You would highly offend the French to tell them the crap to come out your mouth and call it French. No, he fixed me. Man, but I ain't scared of nothing and nobody. Hey, hey, do your job, girl. When I was in the world running to serving the devil, I, hey, I did whatever he wanted me to do. When I got saved, I thought, forget all that crap. But now I'm on the Lord's side. And things are different and things are happening. And I'm not following anybody. I don't mind standing out being different. She, don't, you know, she seems to be different. It's, it, what is it about her? It's called Jesus. You ought to get it. You ought to get it. Yes. See, so... If you don't like where you are this morning, you've been following James and John and Mary Lou and Susie Q. <laughs> hey, baby, come on to Jesus. You can get out of all that stuff. Don't follow them no more. They're going to talk about you. They're going to laugh. Well, after I came to the Lord, some of them wouldn't laugh because they didn't know if I was still... <laughs> Can't be sure that Rose is that chain. See, the Lord put me through the test. I went through the fire for the fire to come out of me. So I was a fighter. He put me through the test of people pushing me to the edge, cursing me out. Nobody cursed Rose out. Nobody called me anything but Rose. Nobody talk behind my back. Let me start coming find you and hunt you down like a bulldog until I find you. And then beat the crap out of you. And Rose, no, that ain't nice. We may have some people here this morning, you ain't nice. You sitting here on Sunday morning trying. <laughs> you ain't nice. Just sitting on the pew with, with Sunday, Sunday, go to, uh, I mean Sunday morning uh, clothes on and, and, and trying to look sanctimonious. Hey, God knows who you are. You can change all that. You can become a new person. If he could change this girl, he can change anybody. Because I was stone crazy. Police getting called on me all the time. No, come over here, bro. We're going to call the police on you. I'm coming. I'm coming. Call the, as, as, uh, as my dear said, call the popo. <laughs> I'm coming. Rose, you don't want to do that. You know, you, you've been, uh, they done told you you can't even be on the property. I'm coming. Crazy. Kicking in doors with double boat locks on it. Just insane. Today. I am a person that can think right, see right, walk right, act right. Yes. Don't keep following the crowd. Don't keep following your friend. Because, man, come on, just a little bit. <laughs> and it's frying your cotton-picking brains. I look at some of my men here. My, my son-in-law, he was a, he was, oh, God. He was in uh, L.A. with gangs and. He had to get saved when he got here. He wanted to marry my daughter. I said, yeah, get saved, baby. He got saved and everything, got it together. That, that boy was crazy. And hadn't married my daughter long. She came in and woke him, leaned over the bed. He wakes up like, oh, I, oh. Still, thought he was, still thought he was out there. Because you, you wake up fighting. He got saved.
but the drug deal still got him talking slow. <laughs> the after effects. I said, how did, what did I just ask you? I, I'm thinking, mama. Okay, speech down, slow down. Another drug addict sitting over here on the end of the purple shirt. <laughs> got saved. He got saved. And he's around my house helping and slow. You say, yeah, I can take care of that. I said, boy, you messed up. I dare you to try to get him in a hurry. Uh. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, I'm coming. Wow. I never did drugs. I was crazy enough sober. I didn't need no alcohol, didn't like alcohol, didn't like drugs, never got into it. But if had I been on that, as crazy as I was already, God helped the day. So if you're sitting there this morning saying, Sister Rose, I think that's some of my trouble. I always feel like I owe my friend. And, you know, if he wants me to go with him and do this stuff, I think, you know, I should do it. No, you shouldn't. Leave him with it by himself. Come on to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. He will save you. Sing that song. He will save you. Come on, musicians. Yeah. He'll change your life. He'll make you new, give you a reason for living, give you a good name. You don't just want a rap sheet. You want a sheet that says, look at who I am. Jesus made the difference in my life. He can make the difference if you let him. You want prayer this morning, want me to pray for you? I'll pray for you. I don't really know if nothing's going to change my life, Sister Rose. I've been like this since I was 12 years old. I don't care if you've been like that since you were five months old. You can change. He changed me. Made me a new person. If any man in Christ has come to Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. All things become new. He can change your life. Make you whole. While they're singing and playing this morning, sing that song. Come to Jesus. That's the person that's going to make the difference. I'm sorry, baby. You have to hit me on the leg. I don't know you're down there. It's my little granddaughter. Come up and change my shoes. And she's just sitting down there waiting. <laughs> yes. God, life is good with Jesus. Just before I left home this morning, three more police officers shot dead in in Baton Rouge a couple of two or three people called him to a scene that they were supposed to be going for something that was wrong and when they got there they, they killed him drew him out to a certain place and killed him we don't want policemen to die we don't want black men dying in this country we want people need to come to God they say how are we going to change this come to God Cause there's hate. There's pure hate. We need Jesus to love everybody in spite of. So if you're here this morning and you want prayer, I want you to know we will pray for you and help you.